Hey guys, what is going on? Crash Player here. Guys, have something a little bit different for you today. I uh, started to make a little video yesterday. Um, I think I started to stream actually by accident. Didn't mean to do that. Oh well, nonetheless, I uh, wanted to make a video. I wanted to record it so I could add my effects and stuff like that. But what I started to talk about on that video, what I'm doing today, is more or less um, a response to uh, some of the comments um, that I've been going back and forth with on uh, with uh, you know one individual. Um, and I just want to say this individual, who I'm not going to say his name, it's not important. Um, it's it's been tasteful. It's been you know respectful back and forth. And uh, I'm I'm old school. I'm the kind of guy who believes in giving respect until respect is not deserved. Um, and so, you know, he has the right to say and feel whatever he wants. I get that. Absolutely. Not going to argue that. What I am going to argue is what the conversation is about is um, the idea of dice control or dice influence. Um, he is a starch believer that dice influence or dice control is just a myth. It's stupid. It's ridiculous. It's impossible. It won't happen. Never, never has happened. Never will happen. And uh, of course, I feel that is just, that is false. Um, this guy will actually play bubble craps because he says that you have more control over bubble craps than you do in a dice game on a table. <coughs> what? You, you want to talk about random? Jesus. So, I mean, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and nail this down once and for all. Um, I doubt it will be, but at least it'll help drill the point home. Um, do a couple random shooters, see how they do, and then do a dice control shooter, the best of my ability, and see how that goes. See which one proves to be right. So let's just try this out. Random shooter number one. He's going to come up for a 10. Uh, otherwise, guys, I hope you guys are doing well today. Um, beautiful day, oops, beautiful day in the Midwest here. So I hope you guys are having a beautiful, wonderful day where you are. Randy gets a nine. Now, again, I want to say that the conversation has been respectful. He's, he's not nasty about it, which is pretty refreshing. Some people get downright nasty uh, in the cover of, you know, a keyboard. Uh-oh, seven out. Randy went out on a seven. Oh, poop. Well, that, you know, that's okay. That's what happens with the Randy. You get one, two, three, four, maybe more. Um, but then they, they go out. Yeah, it's, it's random, you know. You saw the four. Okay, so there's Randy number one. So, I mean, that stands to reason that Randy's will stand up, they'll roll the dice, and they'll they'll take what it comes, and it's all fun, it's all games, it's all randomness. I get that. A lot of people are just like that. Um, he did acknowledge in a couple of his statements that uh, he believes that people can go on hot streaks. Okay, so hot streaks happen. But as far as, you know, the advantage of setting the dice and uh, the particulars, he says it's just kind of hogwash. So this Randy actually hits his point. And that happens. Uh, bone thrower. He claims, or he says that, you know, some of the hottest rolls that he has ever seen have been from random shooters. Uh, there was one time where he was um, at a casino and some random shooter rolled the longest, most profitable roll that he has ever seen. I, I, I can't remember. I want to say it was like, I don't know, 60, 70 something rolls. It was something ungodly. 
when the dice went back to this this random shooter, that person could not replicate anything. It was you know a couple rolls and then seven out, a couple rolls and then seven out, and you know and that's pretty pretty much how the random players work. There's a ten. So not to say that random shooters do not have, you know, a streak of good numbers. This one is doing pretty good. Uh, box cars. The best way that I know to uh, combat some of these saying you know, from people that some of the stuff they say is to compare this to like a, an, another sport, say golf. Six, four, ten. Um, you know, before I actually say that, I, I, I would like to I would like to ask this guy, and I haven't asked him. What are you considering? Well, you know, what is your level of, of success? So, what would happen in a craps, craps game to prove to you that dice setting has an advantage? That dice control and dice influence actually exist, are actually real? And I bet that that answer would be, you need to pre-call your number that you roll. Come on. I mean that. I, I would say that that's not fair. If that were the case, going back to golf, then every professional golfer going to a par three or to a par four would get a hole in one every single time. And Randy actually hit another point. Randy's can go on streaks. That's not the question. If a golfer walks up to the tee and does not get a hole in one, does that mean it's all random for a golfer? If he does not sink, he or she does not sink every single putt, does that mean he's not a skilled golfer? Wait. Oh, the point is four. Get your ass. It, it has to do with what do you consider a success to be? The only person in the world that I'm aware of who can potentially call a number and then roll the dice to get that number is the dominator. So this Randy is having a great role. Going back to this guy's point, yeah. There's a yo. Going back to this point, yes, Randy's can get on a hot streak. Nobody says that they're not, they can't. When it comes to crabs, the whole point, seven out. That was a good roll from this, Randy. Two points. Two points and a whack load of rolls. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. He would have made, he or she would have made that table a lot of money and very happy. But here's what we're going to try here. The whole point of being a skilled shooter is to know 
okay, I'm not going to call my next number. What I'm going to do is call the numbers that I'm going to roll before I seven out. I know that with the set that I'm going to use now, I'm going to get every inside number. And therefore, we, we are good enough to say, I have an SOR of five shots. It's not an overall shot count that makes us good or better than most. What makes us better than most is to use a set and to know what to extract from that set to make us winners in the casino. All of that has to do with dice set, grip, landing zone, SOR. If I may steal that from the bone zone, from the bone thrower himself, the bone matic the whack a bone, the I don't know, this could, that could go really raunchy really quick. I need to stop. With those points, we become dice controllers and craps controllers and influencers. We don't need 50 rolls. We don't need 14 rolls. If we get it, great. We don't need it. We know with our set, our grip, our landing zone, what to expect. Thus, we know how to bet, when to bet, and more importantly, with that SOR, we, need, we know when to bring him down. Five, four, or five shots is all I need inside. We control the fate. Dice influence, dice control, That's what we need. So now a skilled shooter, huh, or lack thereof with me, but somebody, that, somebody that's been practicing will step up to the plate. I don't need 14 rolls. What I need is five. Five point hits. That's what I need. So I know that I'm gonna hit inside numbers with my set. I don't know that this next roll is going to be a six or a nine or an eight or a five, but I do know I will be hitting inside. And because I know that, I can be a winner. That, in my mind, is the measure of success. Three creps. That's key rep. So why, I, why am I doing this? I got thinking there is nothing I'm going to say to this guy. There's nothing I can type in this YouTube conversation to say, you know, to say something that'll make him sit back in his chair and go, you know what, Krebs player? I was wrong. You're right. You know, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say all that stuff. If you're waiting for that to happen, that's not going to happen. That's that's not our nature. That's two score hits. So the only thing I can do is hopefully this guy will watch this video and understand it's I would like to know what is your measure of success? Is it leaving with more money than you walked in with? Is it calling out your next number? Six the hard way. Is it rolling 45, 50 times? I mean, you can't ask for the impossible. What is the measure of success, actually? That's a hard way, baby. That's second score hit, by the way. I'm, I'm just saying that with using the tools that we have been learning along the way, 
using the tools that we've learned along the way we are able to influence the dice with a multitude of factors. I can find the ding set, there we go. Six easy. Nothing is guaranteed, and that's true for everything. Dice control can happen. And because of that control, we can influence probability. When we influence probability, we know how to bet and thus we win. Not every time, no sir. The majority of the time we do. So to that guy, I mean, I understand what you're talking about. He, he actually was spouting off um, an example. He said that some friends of his, I think, or some acquaintances of his, were at a casino, and they had thousands. Oh, I didn't mark that. 12, 12, and there's a yo. had a thousand, he says thousands of dollars on the six and on the eight. What that means exactly, I don't know. Thousands of dollars on the six and eight. I guess whoever was shooting at that time six, two, eight. Whoever was shooting at that time started to roll a bunch of craps numbers. Twos, threes, 11s, 12s. And when that was happening, he decided to go ahead, there, this person decided to go ahead and turn off those bets. So they turned off the six and the eight. The next two numbers were six and then an eight. At which point this guy decided to turn the bets back on. That uh, was a little bit far. Uh, that's a two, craps two. In my humble opinion, and maybe there's some guys that feel this way too. Unfortunately, I have noticed I have become a very superstitious player. If you turn your bets off, only to turn them back on in the middle of a game, guys, I don't know, in my opinion, that's bad mojo. That's no good. I find that to be bad luck. Um, it's, it's, it's taunting the gods, if you will. It's just like you if you place the six and the eight in the next four numbers are five and nine. What happens if you go ahead and bet on the five and nine? You know what comes out next? That's right, big red. There is a lot of superstition in, in craps. I get that. But to say that you cannot influence the dice to do what you needed to do, that's a bunch of crap. I'm sorry but you absolutely can influence the dice to do what you want it to do. Oops. And no disrespect meant to this guy that was saying this on the video either. Uh, he's a nice enough guy. Uh, he has, he has not, you know, he's not told me to have an inappropriate relationship with my mother or anything like that. 
Two one three. Craps three. It's it's simply just um, there's a lot of misunderstanding out there. I know that the bone thrower has put out many videos as far as trying to convince people that dice control and influence is real. And I don't know, guys. You watch some of his videos. I th I think he's done a pretty damn good job to prove that. So when people say that control or influence isn't real, I, I still would go back and say, what is your level of success? What is it that would need to happen to prove to you that dice control is real? Dice influence can happen. It's not easy. It's something that takes time. It takes work and patience. Can you see those? Yeah. Practice. By the way, you guys probably know what set I'm using. That's also not to say, anybody who was watching the live stream from uh, Mr. Coffee, where we all were kind of getting together, having that uh, big cyber craps game. You know, we all had great roles and then we all kind of went out. Nobody is perfect. And if you're expecting perfection, I ask you, please, please get real. There is no such, there's no such thing. Can't reach. But you can control this. You can influence what the dice need to do. To say that you can't is just doubter, and that's fine. I get it. But why dismiss it? Why act like, no, it's impossible. What we're doing, what I'm doing right now is I'm cheating. What I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm tricking the camera. I'm whatever. You guys have seen my videos. You know I suck. I have I have been awful. I, I go back to my first video. I was so bad. Oh my gosh, I was so bad. But through practice and coaching from all you guys out there, Mudslide Mac, Mr. Coffee, Bone Thrower, Collar Up, Ryan Vander Hayden, Michael. I mean, there's there's so many guys I, I have to thank. It's not easy. It takes work. You have to be diligent. You have to be humble. But it can happen. Uh oh. Dice went up on the reel. I mean, this guy, again, I, I'm i not mad at you. I love you. And, I, you know, the, the fact that you came out to one of the videos and just, you know, having uh, an open dialogue and discussing, that's outstanding. That's exactly what you should do. To 
say that you cannot control, um, you know, there's no such thing as a good golfer, that you can't control a golf shot because you're not hitting a hole in one every time. That would be unreal realistic. To say that we can't uh, control craps or have a dice influence because we cannot call every shot that we do is unrealistic. It doesn't often work that way. Oh, six three nine. Point is now nine. Six to eight. And also, um, seeing that bubble craps is, is more of a controlled craps play than table craps. I think that if there was one dig going back and forth between this guy and I, uh, that's got to be it. You cannot be serious with that. 6-5 yoke. Hard 10. Sorry guys that I'm dragging this out, but again, I just, this is the only way I know how to respond to this gentleman. 639, frontline winner. And if you're keeping track, that's a four hit fire bet, baby. Right there is 25 to one. We can't do stuff like this all the time. It's impossible. Nobody can. The important thing is, is that by dice controlling and dice influence, we know how to milk these dice sets like a cow. We know how to milk out numbers from these dice sets for a very specific amount of time, if not longer. And because we can do that, we know how to bet. We know when to bet. And therefore, more often than not, it's possible to win more. You win more, you walk out a winner, that's a pretty good level of success, in my humble opinion. But seriously, there's absolutely nothing I was going to be able to say to this guy to make him sit back in his chair and say, you know what, CP, you are right, I could be wrong. Did it again, 549, frontline winner.
let's see, can I get that in for you? I don't know if you can see that. This is a uh, five to one, or a five hit fire butt bet. That's 250 to one. Again, guys, I apologize. We'll finish this up. Two, one, three. Five, four, nine. You know, every time I do that, I think about the guy that asked me to stop with the stupid sound effects. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. 415. We don't have to have 20, 30, 40 roll sessions to be considered good to know what we're doing and to be a winner. You just don't need it. You need three, four, five hits. Uh, what is it, Ocean's Eleven? Somebody said, you know, how to win against the casino is um, to know when to bet, to come around at that right time, and to bet big at that one specific moment. If you go to a table, you have a dice set, you've practiced, you know what to expect. You trust yourself, you relax, take a breath, take your time. Remember what you've done, remember what you've practiced. Most importantly, you remember the mechanic that you have practiced. Your grip, your throw, your landing zone. You have the right attitude. You don't get greedy thousands of dollars on the six and eight. Remember what you have trained for, what you're, what you're doing, what you're there to do. You're there to have fun. When you have fun, good things will happen for you. Seven out. Probably thought we were going to get the uh, the five. Five points, get the thousand to one. Anywho, I think this is self evident. Uh, guys, I told you we were going to hit inside numbers like crazy. We hit some outside, some extreme outside. Five, six, seven. So we hit seven extreme outside. 
You look at these eights. You look at all those eights. You look at all those nines. You look at the sixes. The point is not to roll 50 times. The point is to roll a, ma you know, a, a minimum of four to five times. And you place your bets based on your, your dice set, based on the throw that you can make. Dice influence, dice control. Control your grip, control your landing zone, control the throw, control the arc. Thus, you influence what the dice is going to do. You end up with numbers you know you can make. You bet on those numbers. Make your seven out ratio. Make your SOR. Walk away a winner. Don't expect something that's unexpectable. Don't expect a 50 roll, a 30 roll. It's not going to happen. You're just going to be disappointed. You make your five shots. Everything over five is cake. So fill up on cake. Fill up on that five shot. Regress down. Make your money. Ouch. Dang it, my, my snapper went away. You walk away a winner. Guys, I love you. Thank you for watching. For now, CP is, is out.